In this video, I want to talk about the adiabatic fin tip uh, boundary condition. So we've been talking about fins of uniform cross-sectional area. We first derived the differential equation from an energy balance. We solved that differential equation. It's a, it's a, we showed that two particular solutions can be summed up, um, either exponentials or hyperbolic uh, trig functions. And uh, we did an example in the last video of an infinite fin. Okay, so an infinite fin had a relatively easy exponential profile. Let's see what happens now if we change the, we're talking about the boundary condition at the tip instead of it being infinitely far away. Let's say it's a finite fin, but the, there's no heat loss through this fin or the heat loss is negligible to this fin tip. Um, it's also not so bad. All we've done is change boundary condition too. Okay, so the temperature at the base of the fin is still the fin uh, base temperature. Okay, you plug TB here, you get one. So state equals one at the base of the fin and the, there's no heat loss at the tip of the fin. Now for the infinite fin, we use the exponential functions to uh, plug in the boundary conditions a little easier. This time, let's use the hyperbolic sine and cosine functions. Again, it doesn't matter. They're both the same, but this is going to be a little more straightforward for this particular video to plug in the boundary conditions. So if we take this hyperbolic sine cosine boundary condition, let's look at boundary condition one. So boundary condition one is theta at zero equals one, okay? Uh, equals, let's plug it in here. Let's plug zero. So it's gonna be C3 cinch of zero plus C4 cosh of zero. And like we said, this behaves very similarly to sine and cosine. So sine of zero is just zero, cosine of zero is one. So this is gonna be left with one equals C4, okay? So that's not so bad. So our new equation is gonna be theta of Z equals C3 cinch MZ plus cosh MZ, okay? Let's plug in the second boundary condition to get C3. So the second boundary condition is that the derivative um, at Z equals one is zero, okay? And this derivative is equal to the derivative of this. Uh, derivative of cinch is going to be cosh. So we'll have an M come out front. So it's going to be M C3 cosh MZ plus M C4 cinch MZ. Okay. And we want to make a special little note here that the derivatives of cinch and cosh are positive, okay? So remember, uh, this is not true for sine and cosine, uh, but you know, one's negative, one's positive, when you take the derivative, but for cinch and cosh, they're both positive, both derivatives are positive. So we can solve for C3 here. Let's see, we move, uh, move this over, divide by M cosh, so the Ms will cancel out, and you're gonna have cinch M z divided by and this is gonna be negative cosh m z equals c3 okay so now we can plug into our equation theta equals okay c3 is now negative cinch m z divided by cosh m z times cinch m i'm sorry this is not m z um because uh, bear with me here. This is at Z equals one. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to place this Z with one, this Z with one. Okay. So that's going to make this, uh, just cinch of M over cosh of M, uh, for C3. Okay. So if you have cinch of M and cosh of M, it's going to be times cinch MZ. And it's going to be plus uh, cosh MZ. Okay, so this is our temperature profile. I've got to say this is not so straightforward to visualize. Um, one thing we can do is simplify this a little bit. Okay, so let's rearrange this. Let's take this equation, bring it over to this side of the cosh, and let's multiply this cosh by uh, cosh M over cosh M. So this is just one. So if you multiply it by one, cosh m over cosh m, then we'll have the same denominator. And so we can make it a common denominator. And uh, this is gonna be theta equals 
Kosh. Okay, if we're looking at this term, it's going to be Kosh M times Kosh MZ minus Cinch M, Cinch MZ, and then now all of it can be divided by Kosh M. And so uh, the beauty is this is a trig identity. Okay, Kosh, uh, so if this is argument A and this is B, then Kosh A or cosh A times cosh B minus cinch A, cinch B is going to equal cosh of A minus B, which is going to be in this case, M minus MZ divided by cosh M, okay? So this is now our temperature profile. Let's move this over here and we can write theta is equal Cosh M minus MZ divided by Cosh M. This is the temperature profile for an adiabatic fin tip. Um, not terribly difficult to solve, but is not so intuitive to visualize like an exponential function. What does this look like in dimensional terms? Okay, so if we replace theta with our temperature difference, um, we can pull an M out front and, and take replace Z with actually X over L. Um, and then also we can plug in M. Anyway, this is where we're going to get solved for the temperature profile. You're going to get a very similar thing. It's basically basically cosh over cosh. Um, and to visualize what this looks like, um, it's plotted here. Okay. So let's say you had a fin that went from this length to this length. And what happens is the fin ends here. So you're going to get uh, a function now, which uh, the tip of the fin, if you have a, a large or small enough M, the temperature is going to propagate down and the tip of your fin is going to start to have a, a higher temperature than, than theta equals zero. Now let's compare that to what we did in the previous lecture with an infinite fin. It actually has a very similar shape. Okay. So this cosh over cosh is very similar to the exponential decay. The difference being um, the exponential decay always approaches uh, zero as you know this z goes to infinity. So we never had an opportunity for a finite z where the temperature at the tip of the fin actually increases. So you can imagine if you put an actual finite into it, uh, this is what we're talking about. So, so it's, it's this exponential function if we could represent it by a finite uh, expression. And so, yeah, this is basically it. We're saying that the, the tip is finite. It's not the exact same expression. They just have very similar kind of shapes. Um, but yeah, this is not exactly an exponential decay. And again, what's going to happen is if you increase M, the temperature is going to decay faster. Um, yeah, so this is the temperature profile for an adiabatic fin tip. And what's the other important factor we want to know for a, for a fin or for any heat transfer problem? It's what's the heat transfer rate? And so if we take this heat transfer rate, again, let's take the clues we did from the infinite fin and let's compute it at the base of the fin so that it's a little bit easier. We don't have to account for any convection. But basically everything that's conducting in through the base is our heat transfer that could be valid later um, if, if you took the heat loss from the entire fin. So Q at Z or X equals zero to be easy. That means Q equals minus K A C dt dx at x equals zero. And so this derivative uh, dt dx, or let, let's get this in terms of theta because we have this expression for theta. So let's write this in terms of theta. So if theta equals t minus t infinity over t base minus t infinity. Then if we move this over and take the derivative, this is minus k ac t base minus t infinity d theta divided by L dz, okay? This is at z equals one. So this is the derivative, I'm sorry, z equals zero. Let's give me some space here. So this is at z equals zero at the base of the fin. So this is Q. Um, let's plug in the function, okay? So let's take the derivative, okay? So we, we're gonna go in and take the derivative of this with respect to z. So uh, this will come out front as a constant. And then you're going to have a um, M minus M come out front when you take the derivative. And cent cosh is going to be cinch. So let's just write this out. Um, Q equals minus M comes out front. So this minus sign cancels out. And you're going to be left with M K A C T 
the B minus T infinity uh, over L. And then this is going to be cinch. Uh, and then this is cinch at Z equals zero. So this term will go away. So it's going to be cinch M divided by cosh M. Um, another way to say this is Q equals, uh, let's plug in the value of M. Okay, so I'm not sure if we have M written here. Uh, let's see if it's written on the front, but we can write it right here. M is going to be equal to, from when we derive the differential equation, it's L times HP over KAC to the one half. So then now this is KA, so that would go in for M. And this is KAC. Uh, divided by L, T base minus T infinity. And the cinch divided by cosh is, of course, hyperbolic tangent. Cinch over cosh is tangent of M. This L cancels out. KAC will make this KAC to the one half. Very similar to what we had before. We now have Q equals HPKAC to the one half. Hyperbolic tangent of M, T b minus t infinity and we defined a new term which is uh this term h p k a c to the one half this is going to be q uh of h a fin okay so h a fin is the effective h a for an infinite fin and then now we've got a hyperbolic tangent and then the temperature difference okay and so um h a fin accounts for the entire surface area not being at the base temperature. So we talked about this in the last uh, last video. So there was no hyperbolic tangent in the last video for an infinite fin. And what happened is since the temperature of the fin, T surface minus T infinity, T varies down the fin. So, uh, so the Newton's law of cooling is, is complicated. But if we take Newton's law of cooling and we just use it at the base temperature of the fin, we say the base temperature for all delta T, then you can put an effective HA fin to account for the fact that the entire fin isn't actually at the base temperature of the fin. Um, and then now with the adiabatic fin, we have a hyperbolic tangent. So that accounts for these tip effects, okay? So this is the adiabatic tip coming into play. And so without a fin, uh, you've got HA minus HA delta T, Newton's law of cooling. And with a fin, you could either solve a complicated temperature profile and integrate it or you can see that the total heat loss would be some HA delta T, the exact same, but now uh, HA is effective since the entire fin isn't actually at TB. Excuse me. And uh, a hyperbolic tangent accounts for the, the tip effects which are going on here with this um, adiabatic fin tip. Okay, the fact that, that that is not infinitely long. So when can we use the infinite approximation? You know, uh, this is, this is the heat loss for an infinite fin. This is the heat loss for an adiabatic fin tip. Um, and so we, we derived both of these from scratch from their temperature profiles. And so what you see is that the infinite fin is equal to the adiabatic fin when hyperbolic tangent is one, approximately equal to one. So that means if the uh, hyperbolic tangent um, term was, was, goes away, this is hyperbolic tangent. So where does hyperbolic tangent equal one? Well, it's at infinity. That's why the fin would have to be infinitely long. But we could pick an arbitrary spot. So we could say maybe right about here, it's close enough to one, okay? So this is 2.65. So let's say if M is greater than or equal to 2.65, this is kind of a good rule of thumb, then hyperbolic tangent is basically one. And so, uh, yeah. For any values of M, and remember M is going to be equal to L H P over K A C to the one half. Okay. So for any values of M, meaning if the fin is long enough or has good enough convection or poor enough conduction, uh, then you can assume it's infinite. So let's look at the temperature profile for that. If M is large, meaning, you know, above 2.65, this would be your temperature profile. So this is the tip of the fin at Z equals one. And you see your temperature profile comes down and it basically goes to zero. Um, obviously it's not zero, but effectively zero when uh, at a distance shorter than your fin, okay? 
Now, Newton's law of cooling says that you need a temperature difference to get heat. So if you're at this spot of your fin and there's now no longer a temperature difference, now the fin at, you know, basically from here on your fin is at T infinity. So now there's no temperature difference between your fin and the cooling fluid. So there's no heat flow for this whole part of the fin. Um, so the point is this doesn't care that the fin keeps going because there's no more heat flow happening after this point. And so in this case, you can use the infinite approximation. So, so if M is large enough, your temperature profile decays quick enough where you no longer have heat loss near the tip of the fin. So after a certain point, um, it, it's basically infinite. As long as your fin is longer than this location, it could be as long as it wants because it's no longer affecting the heat transfer out of the fin. Let's compare that to if M was larger. If M was larger, then you still, your temperature, your, your uh, delta T uh, theta is still greater than zero at the tip of the fin. And so that means, you know, this is your temperature difference, delta T between the, the surrounding fluid and your fin. And so if theta still has heat loss at the tip, um, then it's not quite infinite. But this also brings up an interesting question. Why make your fin longer than Z naught, which is this location I'm showing here, which is where uh, the, the temperature difference has gone away if there's no extra heat transfer? So, I mean, it's a great question. Uh, you can solve infinite fin problems. Certainly the math is straightforward, but from a design principle, would you want to design a fin where now there is no Q uh, for this whole region near the tip because there's no temperature difference? The temperature decayed too quickly. So um, you should really chop this part of your fin off because it's not very effective. Now, if you're talking about a, a fin with a larger value of M, then yeah, then it makes sense. You know, you, you've got to think about how big you want it to be to get the maximum heat loss. It's diminishing returns. So your temperature difference. So basically, look, in, in dimensionless terms, Newton's law of cooling goes by theta. So when theta goes to zero, your temperature difference is gone. Q goes to zero. So like as long as theta is greater than zero, you're going to get heat loss. But this temperature difference gets smaller and smaller as you go down the fin. And so it's kind of a, a diminishing returns. Whereas where do you where do you want to call it quits for how much it costs to make a fin? But mathematically or design, these are kind of two separate questions. Um, the point is, if your fin is longer than this point Z naught, which means M equals 2.65, then uh, you can you just assume it's infinite. And so that's why we talked about the infinite fin solution, because it does have a validity. The takeaways are, look, we got a differential equation that we solved for a fin with an adiabatic fin tip, okay? We showed the temperature profile. It's this uh, interesting hyperbolic uh, cosine profile um, for a finite fin with no heat loss from the tip. We computed the heat transfer rate um, and it's basically Newton's law of cooling with a correction factor for the non-uniform surface temperature and a correction factor for heat loss from the fin tip. And if M is much larger than 2.65, then you can assume that this fin is infinite um, and the implication is that, you know, the temperature has decayed to zero before the tip of the fin. And uh, two, so by the way, 2.65 would be the point where if, if the fin was this long, it would decay to zero at that. So, so M equals 2.65 would be the design criteria, uh, the length uh, and thermal conductivity and heat transfer coefficient for a fin, uh, which would give you the fin where the, the temperature difference would drop to zero at the tip. So that's the takeaway. Um, infinite fins are valid and you just need to understand when uh, to apply the right equations and the right solutions.